Although you don't hear much about these materials, I'm sure you've seen them before. And did you know they offer a bunch of different business opportunities? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Brett, and this is my laser garage. Me and my wife run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping you out with your laser or CNC business. So far in this series, I've gone over my first impressions of the laser and also tested out its cutting capabilities. I'll link to those videos at the end of this one so you can check them out if you haven't already watched them. Today, I want to test out how the Bolt Pro 32 engraves but not just any engraving. Let's test out some materials that don't get much attention on YouTube. Although you don't hear much about these materials, I'm sure you've seen them before. And did you know they also offer a bunch of different business opportunities? I'm talking about laser engravable stone products. Today, I'll be demoing how the Bolt Pro 32 handles laser engravable brick and two different types of granite. I'm really excited about this video because not only are we going to see how the laser handles each material, we're also going to be going over specific business ideas for each, and of course I'll be sharing my settings. Ever been to a sports stadium, church, or a school and noticed bricks or pavers on the building or on the ground with names engraved on them? Keep an eye out as you're around town and I think you'll be surprised how much you actually see this. Fundraising campaigns using engravable bricks are a great way to attract donations to worthy causes and are a fun way for donors to literally stamp their names on a project. They're also a fantastic way to honor loved ones and form a lasting tribute. There are entire companies out there that only engrave bricks or pavers for these types of events. It's literally all they do. This is a pretty big business. But there's still a big piece of that pie out there for people like you and me. That's where this laser brick product comes in. So normal clay bricks are in fact laser engravable and will mark. However, these laser bricks react in a way that produces a nice dark engraving so they have a more consistent look that lasts. The company that I bought these from claims they will last a lifetime in fact. Since this is a new product for me, like always I ran a power and speed test on a sample brick to dial in the settings. This is a really important step whenever trying out something new. I expect this to be an easy material to engrave and I was right but I found it worked best to go slow with high power. This seems to melt whatever material is inside the brick which creates the dark and durable engraving finish. If you go too fast or don't use enough power, this reaction doesn't seem to take place. Now, let's run the actual job and I'll share the settings I ended up going with. In this project, I'm engraving just simple vector text so it won't take too long, just about four minutes or so. In my research, I found companies charge anywhere from $20 to $40 per engraved brick, depending on the size and amount of text or graphics. That's pretty good considering the speed which a laser like the Bolt Pro 32 can crank these out, and the fact that usually a builder or organization buying these will most likely order dozens if not hundreds of these at a time potentially. I am really happy with how these came out, and overall material costs are pretty low. I paid about $3 a piece for these bricks, but they can be a little cheaper if you buy in bulk. I ran this in a single pass at 100 millimeters a second at 100% power with a 0.1 millimeter line interval and the stock two and a half inch lens. So what do you think? Is this something you might be interested in getting into? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Now let's move on to our next product, green granite. Awards are another classic item to engrave that will never go out of style. These are great for making plaques to sell to businesses for things like retirements or salesman of the year and countless other occasions. As with the bricks, there are many companies out there that strictly do this type of work and in large quantities. These businesses sell around the country and offer many different styles and materials. But I found businesses are willing to give us small guys a shot at some of this work. The big companies out there sometimes can't compete with us in terms of customization or personal touches, let's call it. Plus, sometimes people just like to buy stuff from people that they know and can meet with face to face not just through clicks on a computer. If you wanna go after this type of work, I recommend this. Get to know other businesses in your local area and let them know what you do. I like to drop off samples with business cards whenever possible. Continue to do this over and over and the word will spread that you're the go-to person for plaques or whatever else you're trying to sell. So I bought these classic green granite award blanks to test out. They have a great look with the dark green color and lots of cool veining. But let's see how they engrave. My material test showed that I'm getting a really nice white engraving, but the veining areas are engraving slightly different depending on the vein pattern. You could roll with this and get a cool type of look like I did in these samples, but 
I felt these would pop a little bit more with the color fill. To accomplish this, I first masked my granite with some paper masking film and started my engraving job. I ran this in a single pass at 600 millimeters a second at 100% power with a 0.1 millimeter line interval and the stock two and a half inch lens. This engraved through the masking paper and also into the granite. Next, I dusted some metallic gold spray paint onto the plaque, lightly coating the engraved areas. After a couple coats, I set it aside to dry for about 20 minutes. After peeling off the masking paper, I was left with this result. I really like this. This material color filled fantastic and it was really simple and quick. I'm really impressed with the fine details that the bolt was able to engrave. I mean, look at the small text and tiny parts of this logo here. I was able to pick up this detail even with the two and a half inch lens, which is really impressive. But if you think this is impressive, I've saved my favorite material and best product for last. In 2023, the pet memorial services market reached about $1.7 billion worldwide and is expected to continue to grow in the future. As laser engravers, we have the chance to create lasting and meaningful products that help pet owners pay tribute to their cherished pets and be part of this lucrative business. This is the most technical of all the projects we've talked about today, but it has the biggest wow factor for sure. This is because we're going to engrave a detailed photo engraving on this black granite. I think the Bolt Pro 32 is going to be a great choice for this type of project with its RF laser tube and high speed engraving capabilities. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I've said this before, but I am definitely not an expert at photo engravings, but I've been working hard to improve and I really learned a lot from this project. Here's some takeaways I'd like to share. First, watch this series here from the guys over at Laser Everything. This goes over everything you need to know about photo engravings in great detail. It's a ton of information and I've watched it multiple times and each time I do, I pick up something new. I found the topics about line interval and dot correction to be extremely helpful. If you're interested in getting better at photo engravings, I highly recommend you check out this video series. Now, with some newfound knowledge in my brain, I went on to testing. Don't be afraid to burn through some material in order to dial in your settings. The hard work and cost of test materials will pay off in the end when you're able to have total confidence in settings and you're able to recreate them in large quantities. You can see here I spent a lot of time testing. To save some granite material, I started out using some black coated aluminum business cards, but those only gave me some baselines to go off of. It's really important though to do your testing on the exact material you're going to be engraving on. It's an investment in time and material but totally worth it. After spending an evening on this, I came up with some settings that gave me a nice white frosty engraving, which contrasts beautifully on the black granite, and I was able to get a lot of detail out of the photo. I did my testing on a smaller version of the granite, which is five inches by three and a half inches, but now I feel confident enough to run the real job on the final version, which will be five inches by seven. Let's get to engraving, and I'll show you what settings I'm using. One other tip I like to share for the raster engravings is this. It's best practice to send these files to your laser first before running them. This is basically true for any file really, but especially important for photo engravings because the files are relatively large compared to vector engravings. I admit, we usually just hit the play button and light burn to run our jobs and we've never really had an issue. But I always send photo engravings to the machine first. Pressing play and light burn can kind of be compared to streaming a movie. You're basically downloading the movie as you watch it and any break or hiccup in the connection will cause it to buffer or fail. But when you download the entire movie first and then watch it, it's very clear and stable because you have all of the information saved already. So for best results, send your files to the laser first. This file is running at 1250 millimeters a second at 15% max power and 10% minimum power. I'm running the stock two and a half inch lens DPI is set to 1300 with a dot width correction of 0.01 and frequency of 25. Image mode is set to Jarvis. This engraving took about 15 minutes to complete and I think it turned out perfect. This just goes to show how well a precision laser like the Bolt Pro 32 can perform when combined with detailed and specific testing. Do your experimenting beforehand so you don't have to do it with the pressure and timeline of an actual job. I can't believe how much detail came through from the photograph. This isn't a product we currently sell, but after seeing these results, I'm seriously considering adding these to our product line. What do you think? Are you interested in making this product? Not much of a surprise here, but I'm really impressed with the speed and quality that the Bolt Pro 32 is capable of. I'm always amazed when I watch the 5G acceleration and high speeds. I'm going to keep working hard to push this Bolt to its limits, but so far I have not found them.
It's knocked everything I've thrown at it out of the park. I have a lot of experience engraving wood and acrylic, but it was really fun to use this laser to test out some materials and techniques that are a little outside my comfort zone. The products and materials I talked about in this video are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what this laser can do. Don't be afraid to experiment to see what you can come up with. By the way, if you're interested, I bought all the materials in this video from a company called Laser Sketch. This isn't sponsored or anything by them, I'm just a big fan of the products they sell. I'll leave a link to their website down below if you're interested in checking any of it out. If you liked this video, don't forget to check out my other laser and CNC videos showing up on your screen in a few seconds. If you're interested in lasers or CNCs, this is the place to be. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.